Sawadika and welcome to Thailand. Today we're sharing everything you need to know before traveling to this incredibly beautiful country. Whether you're planning a trip to the land of smiles or have always wanted to explore Thailand, you've come to the right place. We're covering everything from entry requirements and visas, daily budgets, accommodation options, transportation, scams, must visit attractions, places to skip, what to pack and of course safety. Whether you're a tourist, a digital nomad or an adventure enthusiast, we believe you'll find this video extremely helpful and if you do, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. We've had the pleasure of traveling to Thailand on a number of occasions and traveling to all the popular iconic spots. Thailand is a location worth visiting if you love elephants, crazy fun nightlife, world famous beaches, snorkeling and diving, temple hopping and some of the best food in all of Southeast Asia. We want to equip you with everything we've learned to make your trip to Thailand as enjoyable as possible. So let's get started with how to get to Thailand. There are three main points of entry into Thailand. Chiang Mai in the north, Bangkok in the center and Phuket in the south. We've actually flown into all three on separate occasions. Bangkok is generally the cheapest and is by far the largest airport, seeing more tourists than any other city in the whole world. If you're landing in Bangkok or Phuket, expect a long ride into the city center that will cost you around $15 on the Grab app. We'll discuss transportation options in a bit more detail later on in this video. But first, let's talk about visas. Currently, visitors from these 64 countries are visa exempt and can stay in Thailand for 30 days. Some countries are eligible for a visa on arrival, which currently costs around 2,000 baht. Here's a list of those countries. The link to the official Thailand visa site is in our resource pack if you want to see what visa your country is eligible for. For longer stays, you can apply for a further 30-day visa extension at one of the immigration offices. You'll need to fill out a form for extension of temporary stay in the kingdom, a form TN7, have two passport photos, and currently the fee is around 1,900 baht or $53. It's best to start with the extension process within the first two weeks of landing. There are a number of other visas you can enter Thailand on. Check the website, it's so good. No outward flight is required in case you do plan on booking a one-way flight like we did. All right, next up is currency. The currency in Thailand is the Thai baht. So the exchange rate as of now is around 30 Thai baht to the US dollar, 39 Thai baht to the Euro, and two Thai baht to the South African Rand. One dollar could get you a toasted sandwich or a pre-cooked meal at 7-Eleven, Clary's favorite, <laughs> a basil rice from a local restaurant, a Thai iced tea, mm. or a packet of insects to snack on in Bangkok. They're actually so good. <laughs> <laughs> you can easily find ATMs throughout Thailand, especially in the major cities and tourist areas. Some reliable banks in Thailand include Bangkok Bank, Kosi Korn Bank, Siam Commercial Bank, and Krung Thai Bank. It's worth it going into a 7-Eleven to draw money, then you know that the bank is safe. Then to exchange foreign currency, once you're through customs at the airport, there are many independent exchange booths you can use. The rate will always be better outside of the airport though, so if you can wait, then we'd recommend exchanging in the city. Again, like ATMs, money exchange places are pretty common in most cities. We used a fair amount of cash. It's essential for street food vendors, tuk-tuk rides, Toll roads in Bangkok, some of the drivers actually ask you to pay the toll yourself. Tips for guides, some massage places, and the local markets. On our recent trip, we spent 52 days in Thailand, and on average, we spent around $11 a day in cash for two people. Mobile payment methods like QR scanning, Apple Pay, Google Pay, as well as credit cards and debit cards are also widely accepted in most restaurants, shops, cafes, etc. All right, let's move on to the best time to visit Thailand. Thailand has a tropical climate and the weather can vary depending on the time of year and the region you're visiting. There are generally three seasons in Thailand. The cool and dry season, which is from November to February, the hot and dry season, which is from March to June, 
And then the rainy season, which is July to October, with the wettest months being September and October. So we would say the best time to visit Thailand is during the cool and dry season with comfortable temperatures and minimal rainfall. We've been in all three seasons and can safely say avoid Thailand during the wet seasons. It doesn't just shower in the afternoons like so many people say, it can rain consistently throughout the day, especially in the coastal areas. And it's just not fun, especially if you want to island hop and have beach days. The beaches will have constant cloud throughout the day and those blues just don't pop. One thing to mention, the islands on the east coast in the Gulf of Thailand get rainy season a little later than the rest of Thailand, meaning it usually rains on these islands from around August to December. Another good time to travel Thailand is during the famous festivals which we'll discuss later under the language and culture section. In terms of peak tourist seasons for Thailand, they are the Christmas period which is basically December, Jan and Feb. Okay, next up is what to pack. Since the weather across Thailand is pretty much always hot, you can pack the same stuff for every destination. When it's hot in Thailand, it's very hot, so be warned, the humidity, especially in the summer months, can be quite hectic, so make sure you're wearing airy stuff. If you plan to visit any temple in Thailand and go inside, then definitely bring more modest clothing that covers the shoulders and knees. Linen pants will do, or a shawl, or you can do what most tourists end up doing and buy a pair of the iconic elephant pants at the entrance. <laughs> Let's go over the rest quickly. A nice outfit for rooftop bars in Bangkok maybe, a rain jacket in case you're going near rainy season, a power bank for charging your phone, waterproof camera or cover for your phone when on a boat or snorkeling, reef safe sunscreen is a big must, Thailand has marine lives that we really don't want to harm, motion sickness tablets or braces is a must for boats, ferries and buses actually, and all water activities. Eco-friendly bug spray, lots of mosquitoes everywhere yeah. in nature, near water, or near the elephants. <laughs> yeah. A good pair of sneakers for trekking with the elephants, for PP viewpoint hike, walking around Bangkok all day, yeah. and a motorbike license for motorbike rental. They're pretty strict with that in Thailand. And then finally, medicines, travelers' diarrhea, antibiotics, because this is Southeast Asia. Ear drops, because of all the water activities, we always have ear issues in Thailand. Lots of cliff jumping. That's it. And then ladies, thrush is a reality in these type of climates. Also bring your own sanitary products. And if you forget anything, don't stress at all. You'll find absolutely everything in the malls here. Thailand has some of the best shopping malls in the world. The malls are next level in every single destination you'll travel to, besides the smaller islands probably. I went crazy on the skincare shopping. It's so good and affordable. We took big check-in luggage bags and had no issue lugging them around here, even on the buses, in taxis, trains, etc. All right, next up is apps to download. Number one is the Grab app to order taxis, food, medicine, etc. We used it a hell of a lot during our time there. Then Air Allo or Holofly for an eSIM if you want to go that route. We'll talk more about the SIM cards in the next section though. Next is Google Maps to help you find restaurants to eat at, the best cafes around you, the best train routes, or the nearest beach. We share our Thailand Google Map link with you in our resource pack. It covers all the places we ate at, hotels we stayed at, over 20 accommodation options for all budgets, so check the link in the description. We recommend downloading offline maps in case you are not in Wi-Fi range and out of data so that you can still navigate around while offline. Google Translate is up next, although we hardly needed it in the touristy areas and when we were with our guides, it can still come in handy if you go off the beaten track. Make sure to again download the languages to use offline. Then make sure you get your Apple Watch and Apple Pay set up. That's really helpful for paying for things. Then for accommodation, we used booking.com. We recommend it to manage your bookings, to see things like check-in times, talk to your host, and book hotels, hostels, etc. Then definitely you have to get get your guide. We book all of our tours and entrance tickets, etc. on there. It's a must. We'll leave a link to our favorite tours down below, or you can scan the QR code on the screen now. Where is he? In the bottom left corner. <laughs> Next up is SIM cards and internet. Thailand offers excellent internet and mobile coverage throughout the country. You can easily purchase a local SIM upon arrival at the airport, in any 7-Eleven convenience store or any train station. 
Here are the prices for the tourist SIM cards through TrueMove, one of the two big SIM card and internet providers in Thailand. The other is AIS. And here are those prices which we saw at the airport in Bangkok. Mobile data is affordable on the apps and 5G allows you to stay connected and navigate through your travels throughout the country, literally everywhere. And if you don't want to change SIM cards and keep your current one in your phone, you can consider getting an eSIM, an electronic SIM as mentioned before, or international roaming, which is what we actually did. As for internet and Wi-Fi, it's pretty darn fantastic, especially in Chiang Mai, the digital nomad hotspot. We had a gigabyte line in our $30 Airbnb. Crazy. Wi-Fi was great at every cafe, every co-working spot, and even during the rain and storms. And that's why we actually never ended up getting a SIM card. We managed fine without it, but that's also because we've been to Thailand a number of times and we know how everything works. The only time you will really need data is to call a grab. What we will suggest is if you do plan on spending a lot of time on the Wi-Fi networks in Thailand is the usage of a VPN. If you have no idea what a VPN is, then it's a good thing NordVPN are today's sponsor of the video. And if you use our unique link on the screen, they give you an exclusive deal. A VPN is a virtual private network. It's basically an application you can easily, with one click of a button, protect all your personal information from hackers and malicious malware. So before you connect to Wi-Fi anywhere or go on any website in a foreign country, you need to turn on your VPN. This kind of tricks your computer or your phone into thinking it's in a different location. Therefore, no one can access your personal details. Not only that, can I tell you the real reason us travelers love using NordVPN? When you're in a foreign country like Thailand, for instance, your Netflix account changes into the local bouquet and all of your normal programs that you love so much disappear. By using NordVPN, you can effectively trick your computer or phone into thinking you're in whatever country home is for you and you'll have access to all your sports and your streaming programs and your favorite shows. Normality will be restored. I use a VPN to stream my sports. It's the only way we're able to keep in the loop on the Springboks Rugby World Cup win last year. And don't even get me started on missing a Tottenham game. Basically, I cannot live without a VPN. It's a key part of me keeping my sanity while on the road. You can click the link in the description to learn more. And if you decide to sign up for NordVPN, they will give you an exclusive deal, which is four months for free when you purchase their two-year plan. Nice. You can also try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you, NordVPN, for supporting us and our travels. All right, let's move on to the next section, accommodation in Thailand. Thailand has all sorts of accommodation options for all budget types from hostels to hotels to private villas to condos to homestays to elephant hotels and some of the biggest resorts in the world. We suggest sticking to everything that isn't Airbnb though. I say that because Thailand has amazing condo buildings with gyms and cinemas and pools listed on Airbnb. But Airbnb is totally shunned upon in these condos in Thailand and is kind of actually not allowed unless you're booking over 30 day stays. There are thousands of listings all over Thailand that will allow you to book these daily or weekly stays. But when you get to the accommodation, most of these buildings have these signs everywhere. And if you don't want to feel like a criminal in Thailand, avoid Airbnb. If you don't mind, go for it because it's such good value for money and no tourist has actually been punished for using Airbnb. We stayed in Airbnbs mainly because we were there for long periods and because Thailand is fantastic for digital movements. We've listed over 30 highly rated accommodations in our resource pack for you, ranging from cheap, comfortable to luxury that either ourselves have stayed in or our friends. You're welcome. Next up is budget. Ultimately, the price of your trip will depend on your itinerary. Thailand can be super affordable, but can also be quite expensive. It's actually very difficult to decide on exact daily budget for Thailand because it depends on whether you're moving around the country a lot or not, and whether you're going island hopping. We've put out this itinerary video though, so let's presume you cover that route for five locations. If you're going to be backpacking, then prices will range between $40 to $70 a day. For comfort, this should cost you around $70 to $150 a day, 
Then if you plan to live a bit more luxuriously, you could be looking at anywhere from $300 a day. <laughs> Things that were expensive for Thai standards were certain Western restaurants, Western grocery shops like Rimping and Tops. They're so good though. I can see why people love being expats in Thailand. And some domestic flights were really pricey, especially to Koh Samui and those islands on the east. For our recent trip to Thailand, excluding international flights to get there, we spent a daily average of $120 for two people visiting five different destinations, all food, accommodation, transport, entertainment, tourist spots are all included in that amount. Obviously, the longer you stay, the more you'll save on long-term accommodation, gyms, co-working spaces, transport, etc. by doing monthly deals. Next up is transportation. How do you get around Thailand? Gosh. Thailand probably has the most amount of transport options we've ever seen in any country. Let's start with number one, tuk-tuks. They are fun and obviously the most iconic mode of transport in Thailand. They can be expensive though, so make sure to negotiate a little bit before you jump in. You will need cash for these. Number two, taxis and grabs. Taxis are readily available in major cities like Bangkok and Phuket. They are metered, so make sure the driver uses the meter to avoid overcharging. We avoid using taxis if we can help it. We rather use the Grab app instead. What we did do is book private shuttles from the airport to our accommodation. Most hotels and Airbnb hosts offer this service, so just check with them. It takes forever to get around with cars though. Traffic is a nightmare, especially in Bangkok. Just prepare yourself. All right, number three is the water taxis. In Bangkok, a popular and very fun way to get around is the canal water taxi system. It's quick, efficient, cheap, and so fun. Clary, you loved it. I love it. A great way to miss sitting in the traffic, we must say. You will need cash on you to buy a ticket. There'll be a guy right on the boat. You pay as you get on. Number four, song towels. Song towels are converted pickup trucks with covered rear seating. They operate as shared taxis and are a super cost effective way to travel short distances within a town or between nearby villages. You'll pay cash for these. Number five, Skytrain and metros. The best alternative to avoiding the car traffic is the Skytrains and the metros. Amazing, this is the best way to get around Bangkok. We did a cringe video long ago that explained the whole system and how we used it linked above. So if you really want to put yourself through it, you can go to watch it there. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that video. <laughs> Number six is motorcycle taxis. You'll find motorcycle taxis like Grab Bike in most Thai cities. They're super cheap. We've personally never used them in Bangkok specifically because driving there is a little scary on massive highways. We'd only probably suggest them in Chiang Mai and Phuket. Stick to cars or trains in Bangkok for your life. All right, then next is buses. These buses are affordable and connect major cities and towns. We use them to get between Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai and they were great. We booked the green bus on 12 Go Asia and it cost us just $11 each. And you can book VIP and first class buses that offer more comfort and amenities for longer journeys as well. All right, then it's ferries and boats. If you're heading to Thailand's islands, you'll likely need to take a ferry or a boat. They connect the mainland to popular destinations like Phuket, Koh Samui, and the PP Islands. You can book these again on 12 Go Asia or get your guide. Trains. Thailand's national railway system is extensive and affordable between cities. You can book from Bangkok to Chiang Mai, for example, for around $30 to $40, or Bangkok to Champuhan and then catch the ferry to the Eastern Islands. Just take note, train journeys are quite long. The examples I just gave you are around 12 hours long. There are much quicker ways to get around Thailand that can be super affordable as well. And that brings us to number 10, domestic flights. We use this option the most because it's way quicker. Some domestic flights are super cheap and some are ridiculously expensive, bro. Flying to Koh Samui from Bangkok, for example, was more expensive than flying from Bangkok to Bali. Air Asia and Thai Airways are the most popular airlines. All right, then there's car rentals. Renting a car can be a great option if you want more flexibility and independence. However, driving in Thailand can be challenging due to the traffic and different road rules, so it's up to you. You will obviously need the appropriate license if you go that route. Number 12, bicycles and motorbikes. In some places, renting a bicycle or a motorbike can be a fun and convenient way to explore the local surroundings. You do need a motorbike license in Thailand to rent a motorbike legally. 
the rental place won't ask you for one, but they'll advise you to have one for if the police stop you. All right, next up is language and culture. The official language of Thailand is Thai, but you'll find that many Thais in tourist areas speak English quite fluently. Learning Thai can be a bit challenging due to its tonal nature, but it's always appreciated if you do try. Some basic Thai phrases you'll need to know are Hello, Sawadi ka. Sawadi krap if you're a male. Thank you, Kapun ka. Kapun krap if you're a male. And finally, no problem, my pen rai. They can all go a long way in connecting you with the locals. As for Thai culture, the country is predominantly Buddhist. You'll encounter numerous temples and monks during your travels. Buddhism plays a significant role in the daily lives of Thais. Thai history is rich and varied, featuring ancient kingdoms, influences from neighboring countries, and a fascinating cultural tapestry. On our tour in Bangkok, we learned that everything in Thailand was taken from different countries around the world and made unique to Thailand. Thailand have adopted a mentality of welcoming all neighbors with open arms and smiles, hence why it's known as the land of smiles. Throughout history, they've had conflict with Burma and Vietnam and periods of tense standoff and conflict with the colonial empires of Britain and France, yet you'll feel very little of their influence on their country actually. Probably mainly British influence in Bangkok, but that's it. The country has many traditions and festivals that are so awesome and that you should try and time your travels during. First is the Songkran festival, which is the Thai New Year, which happens on the 13th of April and celebrated for three days by everyone having water fights and parties on the streets. Yo, fun. It looked like so much fun. And then Loi Kratong. The festival of lights and lanterns, which usually is during the months of November every year, which we're dying to see one day. We really are. Try visit Thailand during these periods if you can. Moving on, things we recommend. If you're looking for what we think is the perfect 14 day Thailand itinerary, then you can watch the last video we put out linked above. We have to preface this by saying, Thailand is huge and it'll take you months to visit every spot, hence why we haven't even been everywhere. But here are our favorites. Number one, Bangkok Kizil. Explore the bustling food markets and the nightlife of Bangkok and do some temple hopping of course. Thai massages, 7-Elevens, tuk-tuk shopping, street food, cocktail bars, eat scorpions and insects, do all the things. We love Bangkok and it's only because we did it right. Number two, the Changs. The Changs? <laughs> <laughs> all right, in Northern Thailand where the weather is slightly cooler and you're surrounded by nature, it's here that you'll bathe with elephants, do a cooking class and eat the best food in the whole of Southeast Asia. I promise you. White Temple and Blue Temple in Chiang Rai is also worth a visit in my opinion. The photos we got at the White Temple, oh my gosh. Amazing. And then number three, island hopping. There's no doubt Thailand has some of the most beautiful beaches and islands in the world. There are two choices for your island hopping. The west coast islands of either Phuket, Krabi and Pipi to visit the world famous Maya Bay. These are definitely the busier and more popular but for a reason guys. Or visit the east coast islands of Koh Samui, Koh Pangang, Koh Tao. There, you'll have world-class snorkeling and diving spots. Labamba is a great scuba diving school if you want to get certified with them. We haven't been to those islands yet, but we've heard they're a little more premium and beautiful and a little low-key. However, these islands do attract crowds all year for the full moon party in Koh Phangan. Add that to your list if you're young and wild and free. <laughs> you can do all of these islands if you do have quite a few weeks in Thailand as well. The East Coast Islands are definitely going to be our next trip to Thailand. 100%. All right, then it's Khao Sok National Park, our personal favorite area in Thailand. I don't know what it is about this area, but it's Thailand's hidden gem for sure. No. You can visit lesser known areas of Thailand like Pai, Ao Nang, and Phang Nao. I think I'm saying that right. For less crowds and more authenticity. But let's talk where to stay. In Bangkok, the best areas for tourists are Siam Square, by far the most happening and best location for shopping. Sukhumvit is Bangkok's longest and most famous street, which is lined with bars, restaurants, shopping centers, and all. Khao San is good for a party scene and lots of backpacker options. And then there is Bangkok Old Town, which is popular for its close location to many of the historical sites. Salam gets an honorable mention here on the list, a financial district during the day, which comes alive with rooftop bars, sidewalk stalls, and street vendors during the night. 
Chiang Mai offers a variety of accommodations and spots and it doesn't actually matter too much where you decide to stay but our favorite areas were Niman, uh, the old town and the area near the central mall here. Phuket has a wide range of beachfront hotels and resorts in areas like Patong Beach, Karong Beach and Kata Beach. We'd suggest staying in the Patong area if you really want to be in the thick of it. We stayed in Karong and Kata and we must say we prefer Kata. That's our favorite. For the islands like Ko Samui, Ko Pangang and Ko Pi Pi, it doesn't really matter too much. The islands are really small, it's easy to get around, so just stay anywhere near the beach and I'm sure you'll be more than happy. Our resource pack includes prime accommodation options that we and our friends have personally stayed in and recommend. Moving on to our favorite section, what to eat. Oh my gosh. This is Reti's favorite Asian cuisine by far. We have eaten some life-changing meals in Thailand. I'm sure you all know how world famous Thai cuisine is with almost all of us being able to get a Pad Thai down the road. But I promise you cannot beat Thai food in Thailand. Here's everything you need to try. First on our list is not actually Pad Thai, it's actually Khao Soi. It's tender beef or chicken in a spicy coconut milky curry broth with egg noodles and crispy noodles. It's a northern Thailand dish so it's best eaten yeah. in either Chiang Mai or Chiang Rai. It's unbelievable. We would travel back to Thailand just to eat this dish. I'm not even joking. All right, number two is Pad Thai. Of course, you have to try the famous national dish of Thailand, stir fried rice noodles with shrimp, chicken, or tofu topped with crushed peanuts and lime. It's great. Just be careful if you're allergic to nuts. Number three, Thai green curry. It's a spicy and fragrant curry with coconut milk, green chilies, and Thai herbs. It's always so bloody spicy though, so beware, but it is so tasty. Number four, basil chicken, also another spicy meal. Krapao, which krapao us when we're in Phuket. It's minced pork or chicken with egg and rice. It's very delicious, packed a lot of flavor, and it's available pretty much anywhere for around one to two dollars. Tom Yum. This is a hot and sour soup with shrimp and chicken, lemongrass, and lime leaves. I'm not the biggest fan, but you can try it. I think it's because it's quite a lot of bitterness, eh? It's the first meal you ever ate in Thailand in Eww. 2017. I remember it distinctively. And it was quite stressful. I was like, oh, well, was this what, what are we food eating? is like? <laughs> Alright, then Masaman curry. Oh, it's a rich, mild curry, but with tender beef or chicken potatoes and peanuts oh it's just so delicious it's one of my faves never too spicy and you can actually find it everywhere in the world as well Not and even in my favorite is next Mango sticky rice. You cannot come to Thailand and not eat this at least once every few days. Literally. It's a sweet and creamy dessert made with ripe mango and glutinous rice drizzled in coconut milk. It's not too sweet. It's absolutely fantastic. I'd eat it every day if I had the chance. And then finally, when in Thailand, you just have to try Thai street food snacks. We went to the street in Bangkok where they had so many amazing snacks at each store we tried. It blew us away. We were actually on a tour, we'll link it down for you. And then of course there's also the scorpions, insects and spiders. It's just part of the experience and low-key, insects are actually really yummy. Scorpions. <laughs> Alright, moving on to water and ice. It's advisable not to drink the tap water in Thailand. There's bottled water widely available. In the condo buildings, you'll actually find these big water machines where you can refill your bottles. It's pretty cheap at around 10 baht per 10 liters. Plastic waste is large in Thailand, so reduce plastic by considering bringing a refillable bottle. Most restaurants, hotels, and cafes provide ice made from purified water. You can also buy huge big bags of ice at any 7-Eleven. Next up is alcohol and smoking. Thailand is known for its insane nightlife, new moon parties, and you'll find plenty of bars and clubs serving a wide range of alcoholic beverages. Thai beer like Singer and Chang are popular choices. However, be cautious with the local spirits and always drink responsibly, especially at the new moon festivals. Weed, marijuana, is completely legal too. You'll see a marriage. <laughs> I can't say the word, if somebody say marijuana, I can't say it. You'll see a marijuana shop every 10 meters. There are more weed shops than cafes, cafes, I swear. Our friends tried some cookies in Bangkok. 
and nearly had to go to the hospital, so be warned. All right, next up, let's talk about vaccinations and diseases. In addition to routine vaccines such as measles and polio, consider vaccinations for hepatitis A and B and typhoid. We never travel to Southeast Asia without those two jabs. It's essential to consult with your healthcare provider to discuss your specific vaccination needs before your trip. We do every single trip. Tell them exactly where you're going in Thailand as well. Malaria is endemic to specific areas in Thailand, particularly in the rural forested areas bordering Burma, Myanmar, and Cambodia, and Laos, and the provinces of the far south along the border with Malaysia. Dengue is also found in Thailand in the rural areas. If you plan to visit off the beaten path destinations, then carry a good mosquito repellent with you. We actually got overrun with mosquitoes in Chai Lai Orchid in Chiang Mai. It was borderline unpleasant, so make sure you wear long sleeves. Moving on, my faith, <laughs> pharmacies and doctors. Pharmacies are indicated with a sign that says Pharma. They are readily available in Thailand. You can find common over-the-counter medications as well as prescription drugs at most pharmacies. You don't need scripts from the doctor. You'll find good painkillers, eardrops, motion sickness meds, all sorts there. Thailand have great herbal and traditional medicine options that are good too. For example, this is a common inhaler it actually went viral on TikTok. Smell it already. <laughs> you can smell it. It's great for blocked noses and actually for motion sickness. <laughs> Grab yourself one of these for less than a dollar. Uh, do consult your doctor before you try some herbs so they can be quite strong. As for doctors, we saw one in Bangkok and it was actually quite pricey. You will probably need to seek out an English speaking doctor if you're English and they are automatically more expensive than local doctors. Nowhere near American standards, but pricey for Southeast Asian standards. Mm. Be prepared and covered by travel or medical insurance. Next up is travel insurance. As we just mentioned, travel insurance is not mandatory for entering in Thailand, but we highly recommend it while traveling to any country, especially in Southeast Asia. Food poisoning, Bangkok barely, lost like lost or damaged luggage, oh mm. look, you know. Missed flights, boating accidents, scooter crashes, and what if an elephant steps on your foot? All sorts can go wrong in Thailand. Please make sure, I'm only joking by the way. Please make sure you're covered before you travel here. Safety Wing is by far our favorite. It's super affordable. You can sign up and cancel whenever you want and we'll leave a link to that in the description for you. All right, next up is length of stay. This can really vary depending on what you want out of your trip and how much of the country you want to cover. Here are some suggested durations. Seven days, you can just stick to two destinations of your choice. 10 days, you can explore Bangkok, Chiang Mai, and one beach destination like Phuket and couple that with Pipi, or you can do Koh Samui and Koh Phangan together. And then 14 days, this is the ideal time for a good trip in Thailand. You can do Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, and Khao Sok, and a coastal region of your choice. All right, next up is electricity. Thailand uses type A, type B, and type C electrical sockets. These are what they look like. It's advisable to bring a universal adapter to ensure compatibility with local sockets. If you're South African, our two-pin plugs work perfectly in Thailand. We like that. <laughs> next section is tipping. Tipping is not mandatory in Thailand, but it is appreciated, especially in the service industry. In restaurants, rounding up the bill or leaving a small tip is common. Tour guides, drivers, and other service providers might kind of also expect gratuities for their services. It kind of depends really who you're using. All right, next up is laundry. While many hotels and guest houses offer laundry services, you can also find self-service laundromats in most cities. We personally always had an Airbnb with a washer, so we did our own laundry and bought laundry detergent and softener at the convenience stores or at Tops, a Western grocery chain that's found all over Thailand. Some of the condo buildings also have these big laundromat sections you could use if your accommodation doesn't have its own dryer and washer. Now, let's talk about weather and natural disasters. This is one of our biggest concerns while visiting Thailand. The natural disasters are kind of scary here. Tsunamis, although they aren't common at all in Thailand, I'm sure we've all heard of the big Indian Ocean tsunami that flattened Phi Island. 
Phuket and a lot of the coastal regions in December 2004. This was always playing on my mind to be honest and you're reminded of it every day. There's tsunami evacuation route signs absolutely everywhere especially in Phuket and even a memorial we saw on PP Island. I won't even lie to you and say that it didn't make me anxious but I do know how rare tsunamis actually are in Thailand's history. It can happen at any time though one day so just take note of the signs and know your best route to higher land. If you do hear alarms while on the beach don't stand around and hesitate. <laughs> Get a move on bro! Alright then flooding due to tropical storms and typhoons. This is probably the biggest danger and something that occurs every year in Thailand. The wet season from May to October can bring heavy rains, flooding and all possibilities of landslides. This is more common though in the southern regions and along the coastlines. And then burning season in Chiang Mai, it typically refers to a period where the farmers burn their agricultural fields to clear them and prepare for the next planting season. This often leads to hectic air pollution and haze in the region usually occurring between late February to April, so just be aware of this. Alright, next up is what to skip. We like to do these sections to let you know honestly from the bottom of our hearts what's not worth spending your time or money on. Number one, we've heard Pattaya. This is a city known for its nightlife, but it has a bad reputation and it's not suitable for all travelers. Number two, Phuket. Don't go here if you're sensitive to animal welfare. There are so many instances where you will experience people offering wildlife encounters, circuses, photo opportunities with eagles and nocturnal animals on the beach and elephant riding. It's for this reason that Rhett and I will n never go back to Phuket. Kosamoy and Koh Phangan full moon party. While it's famous, it's not for everyone. It can get quite wild and dangerous. And then all party streets in Thailand. Avoid these if you're conservative, have arachnophobia, yeah. and also sensitive to things like eating scorpions, alligators, spiders, etc. Next, a section a lot of people are interested is safety and scams. Thailand is generally considered a safe country for travelers, including solo female travelers and those part of the LGBTQI community. However, I would be cautious at bars and party streets, ladies. Spiking and harassment is not uncommon there. Petty theft can occur in the crowded areas as well, so always be mindful of your belongings. Thailand has really strict drug laws and possession of illegal substances can lead to severe penalties. Besides marijuana. <laughs> yeah. While Thailand is quite a safe destination, it's not immune to scams, especially in the touristy areas. Some common scams to watch out for include tuk-tuk drivers offering overly cheap rides with hidden conditions, gem scams, which we almost got oh, caught in, <laughs> and offers for tours or services that sound too good to be true. Always use a reputable and licensed service provider to avoid falling victim to scams. Always book tours and experiences on Get Your Guide. We've listed our favorite experiences on our wish list. You can scan the QR code again here on the screen to load the list. And lastly, the other things to note. Thai culture places a strong emphasis on respect and politeness. Familiarize yourself with some basic cultural etiquette, such as removing your shoes before entering someone's home or a temple, and showing respect for religious sites and symbols. Then a big one is showing respect for the monarchy. Thailand has strict laws regarding the monarchy and it's important for visitors to show respect. Avoid making derogatory comments or engaging in any behavior that could be received as disrespectful towards the monarchy. And that's, that's it. it. <laughs> We've covered everything you need to know about Thailand. If you have any questions or if there's something that you think we've missed, comment it down below or you can reach out to us on Instagram. Don't forget to grab our Thailand resource pack and finally please leave this video with a like to help more people see it and we will see you guys in the next one. Safe travels to Thailand. Lagan. Lagan. Goodbye. <laughs> that thing where you put stuff on your nose. What? Was the ending fun? <laughs>